Hi, I'm Virginia from Right Clinic and here with me today is Anupa from India. Thank you so much for being here. Hello. Would you like to <laughs> Hello. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you so much for having me, first of all. Uh, so like I said, um, yeah, like you said, uh, I'm based in India. Um, I graduated, I did my MBBS, graduated from AIMS in 2020. And I've been working as a medical writer for the past four, four and a half years now. Like I started working while I was in internship in college. And um, so for the initial two years, I was doing it on, you know, on the side as a freelance thing, kind of, and also doing clinics, uh, you know, on the side, kind of figuring out if I can make this into like a full-time thing. After two years, I figured that, yes, I probably can. And then, you know, I kind of left clinical medicine altogether and started working as a full-time medical writer. So, yeah. Amazing. So how did you kind of learn about medical writing? Because you went into a clinical degree where you were going to be practicing as a doctor, but now you've decided to go into a full-time medical writing. So how did you kind of make that transition, that that kind of choice? And, and what did you do so that you could go into it full time um so how i came across it was basically i was looking for options like so i figured out that i didn't want to do medicine like clinical medicine and i was looking for something else you know something preferably remote because i wanted to travel like i said so um i was looking for options that i can do and um so one of my you know go-to strategies was to kind of apply to all the internships on internshara i'm not sure if you know about internshara but it's like a platform where you can you know uh, apply for internships for all, of all sorts so i used to go to internshara and apply for any medical internship that i used to see so i'll just search for words like medicine healthcare medical you know those keywords and i would apply for everything so the first gig that i got was basically like content writing for a website for a doctor so at that point, I didn't know that, you know, what I was doing was actually medical writing. I just knew that I was just writing content for a doctor. And um, so that's how basically I got into it. And then he taught me a lot. Like he was, you know, one of my first mentors and he taught me a lot. Like he told me about medical writing, like there's a whole field out there. Uh, plus he taught me like, you know, SEO, how to build websites, like a bunch of different stuff. So yeah, that is basically how I started. And then I kind of got to know about medical writing. And then I started looking up for medical writing jobs on Indie, LinkedIn, all the usual stuff. And yeah, that's that's basically how all of, all of it began. As for how I transitioned is basically that, um, so I, you know, started doing medical writing. The first gig that I was talking about happened in my college, like while I was doing internship. So um Initially, for the first two years, I was kind of, you know, doing it on the side as a part-time freelance thing, just to kind of figure out if this is something that I can turn into a full-time thing. And also, I was working in the clinics to kind of, you know, save some money. So, that is basically what was happening. And after two years, I kind of figured, yes, that uh, this can be something that, you know, can be turned into something full-time. So, after two years, once I was um, much more experienced, once I had a bit more idea about the field, that's when I kind of made the transition to full-time job. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. I wanted to ask you, how did you find your first client? So you said you were applying for internships, but then how did you find clients after that, after you got all that fantastic training? Uh, so after that, um, most of my clients, like I look for like freelance jobs on Indeed.com. So I got like a bunch of, or like two, three clients from there. Um, and then I also cold emailed a bunch of medical writing agencies. Like I just went to Google, looked for medical writing agencies and just emailed all of them. Like, you know, with my resume saying, and this is this and uh, would love to work with you guys. And I must have cold emailed like, I don't know, 100, 200 people and just one of them replied, but that was enough. <laughs> so yeah, that was basically how I got clients while I was doing like a uh, part-time thing because obviously I also did not have, you know, uh, more time to uh, do stuff. So at that point, I had like three clients, uh, like I was working with three people and that was all. So that was happening and clinics were happening. And then once I uh, transitioned into full time, I was working at a company, Cactus Globals. So I was working with them for a year. Um, now I work as a full time freelancer and most of my clients that I get are through LinkedIn. So I use LinkedIn to get clients or the network. Like these are the two ways that work the best for me. Brilliant. I love that. I love your determination as well, because I've also experienced that. You know, you send out hundreds of emails and you just get one, but one is enough. <laughs> I love that. You yeah, yeah. phrased it perfectly. <laughs> so, um, so did you have a portfolio when you were emailing people? Was that part because you said you sent your resume, but did you also have a, a portfolio as well? 
uh, in the beginning, uh, not really because um, I also did not understand, you know, how important a portfolio would be. Uh, initially, what I did was that, you know, whenever I approached somebody or whenever I got, I had to apply for a job or something, most of them had like a test or something that they would want me to give to kind of, you know, figure out if I'm a good fit or not. So what I did was I basically made my portfolio out of all of those tests that I gave. So, you know, whoever asked me to write an article or maybe or write a summary of a research paper or stuff like that. So I would do that, send them, send them the, you know, tests that they asked for and then include that in my portfolio. So that is what I did in the beginning. And eventually when I started realizing that, you know, yes, a portfolio is very, very important because I started realize, realizing a lot of people were asking me for a portfolio and I didn't really have one to, you know, show for. So then I, um, one, one day I you know, kind of just sat down and worked on my portfolio for like a month or so and I built up some articles, put it in my portfolio and then, um, yeah, the kind of clients and the influx of clients was very good. So, yeah, that's basically Amazing. how I went about it. Yeah. Yeah, well done. I, I love that you kind of kept improving and figuring out what's the best way to apply and putting a, you know, putting a portfolio together and taking that time to put it together is so important because it just helps you get more work overall. So yeah. what kind of uh, what kind of tests did people ask you to do? Because a lot of people ask that question, you know, about what kind of medical writing tests are there? Because I've taken a few as well. So it'd be really interesting yeah. to hear what kind of tests uh, you were given. Yeah, so uh as for the tests, basically when I was doing like freelancing and uh, so the test depended on the clients, like what they were looking for. So uh, like the first client that I ever had who wanted like content for his website. So it was a similar test that he wanted me to write like a blog post on a topic, you know, similar to what he would expect me to write once I'm on the job. So that is what I had to do for them. Um, for one of the agencies that I was working for, they wanted like, it was more scientific and more technical. So they wanted like research summaries for a research study that they, you know, gave one for healthcare professionals and the other for general public. Uh, that was one. Uh, for Cactus Globals, when I got the job, so they had like an online test where they check, you know, your basic medical knowledge and your grammar and English, basic English. So that was the test with them. Um, so these are basically the tests that, you know, like, most of them were in the similar range. Like uh, for clients, it was usually, of course, uh, you know, whatever work they wanted me to do. So like a sample of that. So if somebody wants me to make CME slide decks, for example, so they'll give me like a small topic and ask me to make like five, 10 slides or whatever, 10 slides mostly. So basically whatever they want me to do on the job, a um, small sample of that. Amazing. So I would assume now that because you've got a portfolio, you don't really do tests for free anymore. Is that right? Do you kind of just do the work and say, I've got a portfolio, so, you know, I don't want to spend time doing a test? So uh, mostly, yes, now that's, that, that is what happens. Uh, that Not a lot of people ask me for tests anyways now, like because I have a portfolio, like I said, so I can just send them, send that across to them. Uh, but honestly, if somebody does ask me to do a test and, you know, it's an opportunity that I'm, you know, exploring and willing to do, I am okay with doing the test, especially if it's like a new thing that I've never done before. Because, uh, like, recently I got a project with, you know, uh, that was to do with animation and, like, medical uh, figures and stuff. So that is something that I had never done before. So I was okay with doing the test. Um, but, yeah, uh, the tests do no longer really happen. Like, nobody really asked me to do tests anymore. Amazing. I like that because I think a lot of people get, you know, really stressed about having to do a test every time they need to work for someone, but you don't yeah. if you have a portfolio. So there you have it yeah. from Anupa yeah. herself. <laughs> so what yeah. would be your top tips for medical writers who want to uh, do the type of medical writing that you do? Uh, so if somebody is just looking to get into medical writing, this is something you know, that I always keep saying that basically there are three things that you know uh, people need to work on uh first would definitely be your resume cv second is your portfolio uh like we already discussed and the third i really feel linkedin is something that you know everybody should work on because oh my god the kind of opportunities that are available on linkedin is just you know beyond comprehension to be very honest or uh, like the kind of clients that i work with that i got from linkedin it's, it's really really amazing so um i feel that getting in like if you have somebody who has who, who already is from a medical background, uh, there are no additional courses or you know any certifications that you need to start working as a medical writer. You can just start and you know kind of learn along the way. Of course, we are doing medical writing, so you know it makes sense to kind of learn how to write. Like for example, if your grammar is not that good, or you know you make grammatical errors, or even there are a lot of things that go into actually writing stuff. So um, 
the only kind of courses or skills that i would you know um, tell people to invest in would be like writing skills and learning how to get clients like like clients or jobs like you know you could be the best writer but if you're not getting clients if you don't know how to get clients then it's um you're not getting clients basically right so yeah these are the things that i would really suggest people to work on especially in linkedin uh because it's it's just too amazing <laughs> brilliant yeah. so you've got 10000 followers on linkedin which is amazing so how I'm have honest. you been... yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so how many um you know what's your kind of strategy to building on linkedin because you said linkedin is so uh, such a big part of you finding clients so what's your kind of yeah. strategy Uh, so basically um, before i was not really serious with linkedin and you know i was just apply to jobs that the jobs that would come um but then um, i took a course on linkedin by growth school and it's it's a company in india i'm not sure if you know them it's nothing to do with medicine but they are like you know growth community and stuff like that so and and i really learned a lot from them related to linkedin and you know started applying the stuff that they you know taught so basically i started posting like five times a week started trying to kind of uh give as much information as i could started talking about my journey and you know how i kind of transitioned into medicine and also i realized that um not a lot of people talk about it like you know especially transitioning from medicine is something that is also kind of frowned upon plus not a lot of people do even if they want to because there are not enough resources so that is the whole you know idea behind it that, that was the whole idea behind it that i want to tell people that there are options if you don't want to do clinical medicine there are other options that is basically how it started and then i started posting optimize my profile um started commenting like engaging with people on my comments and um, other things so that is basically how i went about it uh, the one thing that i still don't do as much is kind of networking properly like you know i don't really spend a lot of time uh, commenting on other people's posts and you know, engaging with other people so that is something that even i need to work on but yeah this was the basic strategy that i followed Brilliant. Thank you for your top tips. So, I guess <laughs> after all of that, what's kind of next on the horizon for you? What do you want to do in future as part of your career or are you developing anything to help other people learn about medical writing? What's your what are your kind of future goals? Um, as for helping other people to learn about medical writing, so there is basically like a course that I do. It's a live course, so it's not, you know, recorded yet. uh but we have had two batches of that live course and it's the response has been pretty amazing so that's that's really you know overwhelming in that sense um as for my personal freelancing journey i feel like eventually down the line i would want to have like an agency of my own so you know instead of having to work on every project i kind of aspire to be able to hire other people train them and for them to work on projects and you know just me being more in like a reviewer manager role kind of a situation so that is what um, you know is what i'm looking to do um yeah it's, it's i am i'm it, it is a work in progress because it kind of becomes hard to you know figure out uh, what are the things that i want to delegate um because i'm not sure you know how to go about that but i like to get it out somehow i guess but yeah that's that's what the plan brilliant i love that it's very ambitious and i think it's also a natural kind of progression in the career of a medical writer yeah, yeah. you start to get really good at finding clients then you'll have too much work and then you can <laughs> do the really awesome thing which is to hire other people to help you with that work yeah. and say so you you know you become more than just an individual business you become a business that hires other people so that's really awesome i i could definitely see you doing that and i would love to you know catch up with you again maybe in a couple of years and maybe you'll tell me you've got <laughs> and people that you know um and so that would be really cool so thank you so much for sharing your story today and thank you so much everyone for watching or listening and we'll see you at the next episode bye bye, bye. <laughs>